gentlemen, let's please give a warm welcome to Leland Clausen. Great to be here, boy. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm here. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. First of all, I uh, my name is Leland Clausen. I'm uh, I'm actually also just diagnosed last week. Canada's only narcoleptic comedian. Uh, now, if you know uh, if you know anything about no. <laughs> whoops, <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> First impressions are everything up here. <laughs> I'm all right now, folks. I'm all right. I think I'll be okay. I'll be all right now. How are you guys doing tonight? Are you yeah, having a... Yeah? Good. Good, good. You know, I, I noticed... I was here... I was doing a show in Winnipeg in, in September or so, and I, I, I kind of driven, uh, driven by here by the Church of the Rock, and didn't that used to have a big... Uh, it used to be a foot clinic there, wasn't it? Like, it still kind of is, but, but they've, they've kind of diversified or something, eh? It, it struck me as funny. Uh, Walk-in foot clinic. Uh, if you got problems with your feet, chances are walking in's a little difficult, huh? It's like saying to the, saying to the patients with hemorrhoids, "Yeah, have a seat there." Uh, owie, owie. I don't know. And I also noticed down uh, what's the name of the, the shoe store, Tootsie's or something? Tootsie. Anybody uh, own it here? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Tootsie, it was in September. I was here in September, early September. They had this big promotion on, eh? This big... You can win. You can enter a draw and win free shoes for a year, huh? <laughs> so what, you get like a pair of shoes and after a year? Hey, I give them back now, all right? <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. What kind, of, what kind of deals do these people have? Okay, hey, 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 I got one for you. Hey, buy one shoe. Get the other free, huh? <laughs> Bad. Couldn't believe it. But to have, I drove up today. I should have. I should have flew. I, I should have flew because man, it was a, it was a long bad not drive. You that much. What's that? We're not paying you that much. Yeah. Apparently, not getting paid enough to get security to kick you out either, huh? <laughs> Is that, what's going on? Here? Go down to Tootsie's and buy myself a boot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, the other one's free. All right. Got my new head writer right here. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. Oh, but I was I was driving, drive, you know, it's a, it's a long trip to begin with, and then I got caught behind this this person going really slow, really really slow, and uh, they, they, I, I assume they hit a deer or something, and I think a chunk of it was still like stuck on the grill. <laughs> no, seriously, because I was following this this line of blood, you know, and and I couldn't pass because it, it was a solid line, so you know. <laughs> It's, it's great to be here, though. I, uh, I'm glad to be here. It's, uh, actually, I got it within about, uh, about two, hours, uh, two hours of Winnipeg. I started picking up that, that Christian FM station. You guys like that? Uh, you like that? Yeah. I, I listened to it for about, for about two hours, and I liked it. I would say in the, in the two hours, I liked about, uh, say, 75% of the songs. So, uh, you know, three out of the four. Uh, <laughs> Same song. No, it's pretty good though. But you can't tell. It's it's you know you just flip seek and you, you go through and you hit the station. You can't tell that it's 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 this you know you can't tell that it's different that it's Christian or anything because same cheesy DJs you know the same cheesy contests you know. All right, we're gonna go to the uh, phone lines. We're gonna take a four score and seventh caller through. <laughs> Give us the praise phrase that pays. <laughs> oh yeah, you're the four score and seventh caller. Hi hi. What's the praise phrase that pays? Uh, yea, though I walk through the shadow, valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now show me my money. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Show me the money. Sorry, I messed it up. I messed up a, <laughs> the most popular verse besides John 3.16. I just messed up. But, uh, and now it's quiet. Thanks, folks, for a uh, <laughs> judgmental bunch, are we? Uh, wow. 
Oh, man. I got into comedy because, uh, well, people were pointing and laughing anyways. So, you know, hey. I, might as well... I think it was the shiny shirts. To be honest with you, uh, I might as well make some money. I, I, you guys are already a great crowd. Uh, I want to thank you for coming out. I'm having fun already. I had a, had a show last week. Just a horrible show. Just one of the one of the worst shows I've ever had. Just to, like don't get me wrong. Everybody, everybody's laughing, you know, but they're, they're laughing sarcastically. You know, it's it's really not the same thing. You know. <laughs> oh, Leland, you're so funny. Hardy, ha ha ha. <laughs> and, and to be honest with you, you know, I, I didn't enjoy the the rest of the family reunion either. You know, and I think that <laughs> something that had something to do with it. Tootsie Boot, no. Uh, you're, you're the associate pastor, is that? <laughs> you're the guy setting the example, huh? Is that? <laughs> they warned me of Mark's jokes, but they didn't say that I was gonna have a heckle fest over here. <laughs> She's gonna, get him, get him. She's giving me the... Give it to him. <laughs> I'm sorry. Find the audience. That's awful. I gotta find the. I found everybody. Priming it. Priming it. Oh, priming the audience. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for doing that. And I was failing miserably until you piped up. Thanks for uh, the help. There's a drop there too. Eh? I was gonna do some funny physical thing, and I would have ended up uh, kissing it down there. I'm sure, you would have had something to say about that. But uh... Uh, I like doing shows like this, though. These are these are fun, you know. In front of uh, I, I do shows at everywhere from like community uh, community centers, comedy clubs, you know, bars, churches, and, and I like coming coming back doing doing church gigs. They're they're fun, you know. I get to I get to tell th this story, which I, I I don't normally tell. It's a, it's a true story. The only True story in my life, actually. Uh, I, was, I was 15 years old, sitting in church. It was, it was a Sunday morning. We were, uh, you know, uh, enjoying the sermon. Uh, <laughs> I was 15 years old. You don't, you don't enjoy sermons at that age. You know what I mean? And normally I'm paying attention pretty good. Uh, <laughs> for, for some reason, I was distracted this day, and, and the pastor, he was, he was calling up some people to, uh, it's, it, was, it was like a confirmation, you know, you come up, you, he asks the questions in front of the congregation, you become a member, you know, become a member. And uh, he, I, was, I was pretty sure he called my name, eh? I, I swear, could have sworn he called my name, and I was 15, and that means you're, you're too young to become a member. So I just thought, ah, oh, I guess Leland's just a little spiritually mature, huh, for his age, man? All right. So I was all excited, and I got, I guess it wasn't Leland Clausen, it was Leela Walker, this old lady in our church there. But So I went up to the front, I thought I was, you know, becoming a member, and I'm strutting up there, you know, just thinking I'm the cat's meow, and, and the, the pastor's sm smiling away, and I was like, oh, look at him, he's proud of me, look at him, hey, how you doing, yeah? And meanwhile, he's thinking, oh, what an idiot, what? <laughs> But he, he didn't want to make a scene, so he thought, well, okay, I'll just, you know, ask Leland the same questions, and, and you know, we'll, we'll go through the whole, the whole thing. And I became like a, like a junior member, actually, that day. It's, like, kind of, it's kind of like your learner's license, you know? You can go to the meetings and vote, but you got to be with your mom, that kind of thing. <laughs> Similar. My mom was bugging me about it after. She was like, well, maybe next time you'll learn to pay attention in church, huh? And I was like, well, mom, I'll have to. I'm a member. You can. <laughs> I had a buddy back home, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Christian fella, I had, had a buddy, uh, but buddy, a Christian buddy of mine, he had Tourette's Syndrome. Now if you know anything about, about Tourette's Syndrome, it can give you these, uh, you know, spontaneous outbursts of uncontrollable, uh, you know, obscenities and things like that, and uh, it would strike my buddy, but, you know, it was a little different, because he was a Christian, you know, it'd be like, ah, oh, freaking crap, crap, son of a gun, for Pete's sakes, you know, it's a little bit, even I'd, even I'd be sitting in the corner, just swear, will ya? It's not true, man. Eh? It's all... <laughs> yeah, hold on, A lot of people will laugh instead of scream, but uh, hey, to each his own, huh? Oh. I, I remember this is it's something that that's just struck me the other day. Uh, <laughs> you gonna be okay, man? Get some water. We need some water in here. 
struck me the other day, you know, it, it was, I got thinking about the, the ushers back, back in, in my home church there, and the pastor would need some water up, up on the, uh, the, you know, he, the podium, he's doing his sermon, he needs some water, and, and the usher would, would bring him up some water, but he'd try not to be, you know, he'd try not to draw attention away from the sermon, you know, so he'd be, he'd be trying to sneak up, but by doing that, he's just totally drawing attention to himself, you know what I mean? <laughs> you see those guys, and they're like... Meanwhile, the pastor's up, uh, up at the pulpit. And in conclusion, I freaking crap, crap! Because that was my buddy. Uh, uh, the... <laughs> there you go. I'm going to check, make sure this is just water, because you're. Uh... Were you drinking from that? Did I? Crazy. Uh, crazy. You're crazy. You're a crazy bunch, I would say. <laughs> You've been cheering for everything tonight, haven't you? That's... Oh, man. But uh, you, you do have to forgive me, folks. Uh, well, you don't have to, but, but uh, you're, doing, you're pretty judgmental, so I guess... Uh, <laughs> no. But uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm a little bit off tonight. You, you may notice throughout the night, I'm, I'm just not quite 100%, folks. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you why. It's because what I like to do before I have, a, have an evening show, have a little afternoon sleep, you know, so I got lots of, lots of energy and, and ready to go and stuff. And I, I woke up in the middle of my afternoon sleep. The, uh, the stupid uh, uh, carbon monoxide detector was going. <laughs> probably just a bad battery, so I took that out. Didn't want to wake the wife and kids. <laughs> well, they're sleeping pretty soundly, eh? And you don't want to... So, I actually gave him a call right before I got on stage. And uh, I don't know, must have went out or something. I don't know. Not answering the phone. But, uh... You guys have, by applause, how many people have the Air Miles card? Have the Air Miles going on? By applause and, and you wave your hands. Okay. Uh, well, that's right. It's charismatic church. Ooh, we, uh, I don't. Uh, I don't have the. I don't have the air miles card. I, I don't trust myself with plastic. You know, I'll just end up racking it up. You know, and I don't want to. Don't do that. You gotta try some. You know what I mean, man? You gotta. Do you guys have the internet? How many people on the internet here? Yeah, quite a few of you. It's, uh, do, you, do you buy things off the internet? They, they say it's dangerous. You, you can get, uh, if you put your MasterCard number out there, you can, you can get stolen from and stuff. But I, I got a way around that, folks. If, you, if you're on eBay or something, you're buying some stuff, you put your MasterCard number out there, but you also put your Air Miles card number out there too, you know? So if you're gonna get stolen from, go <laughs> off to Hawaii, man. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Uh, you gonna try that? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't recommend taking life lessons from me, sir. Uh, I wouldn't, uh, or your pastor here. I wouldn't, uh, those two. No, I was talking about the, the air miles. I'm a positive guy. And, and the reason I am is because my dad was like the opposite, eh? Real negative, just the most negative per Like, he wouldn't say the most negative, you know, ah, uh, probably not the most, but you know, real negative. Uh, nonetheless, but, uh, <laughs> I'll give you an example of how negative my dad is. He uh, uh, went off to college, you know, I met, met a fine lady, you know, brought her home. You, you meet, you know, you, you meet a lady, you, you bring them home to the, to the folks to meet. And, uh, and you know, I, I pulled dad aside when we were back home and I'm like, hey dad, what do you think? Hey, great lady? And he's like, yeah, yeah. But you don't have a job, do you, huh? And, <laughs> in college, did you forgotten? So a little while after I graduated from college, got a, got a pretty good job, pretty happy, but because of that, you know, the lady and I had to go our, our separate ways, and so I was back home again, but I was like, hey, Dad, hey, got a, got a great job now, huh? Yeah, well, you got no one to share with, do you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so then finally, met the lady who's, who's now my wife, and, and knew she was the one, brought her home, still had the great job, and I was like, Dad, pull him aside, hey, great lady, 
Great job, huh? What do you think? Yeah, oh yeah. Now you got nothing to look forward to, do you? Huh? <laughs> I had a condition growing up. The one side of my head was uh, like I couldn't feel. It was like it was like numb, uh, like, a, like a numb numb skull. Uh, at least that's what Dad said. I, uh, it's not even a doctor though. I don't know how true that is. But, uh, we moved out to the country when I was uh, I was seven years old. Moved out to uh, to this, this this farm. First thing my dad built. This is true. This is another truth. There's a couple, I guess. Uh, he built a, we built a garage first. Instead of building the house, hey, let's get that garage up, huh? <laughs> so for the first year, I li we lived in the garage for a year. My whole family and I, we lived in this garage. And living in a garage actually isn't, isn't too, too bad. I except when Dad left the car running. You know, then it was a little... <laughs> That's when it was rough. My, my mom, real honest, my mom's like the, uh, just the most honest, she cannot tell a lie, and that's a good thing, of course, you know, you, you want to be honest, but my mom never heard of that whole thing about, uh, you know, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all, and she always <laughs> told way too much information, you know what I mean? Like, she's, this is the point of being honest, and then just like, blabity blabity blab, you know? <laughs> Telling total strangers my, <laughs> never mind, it's painful. Uh... <laughs> So one time, my sister and I are having this argument, this big fight, my sister and I are just, just going at it, and uh, she stops right at, near the end of it, and she's like, yeah, well, you know what? You're a big mistake. You weren't even supposed to be born. And she runs off, eh? And I was just like, you know, as a kid, you hear that, you, and so I went in to mom right away, and I'm like, mom, Luann said I'm a mistake. Is that true? Well, yes. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, that doesn't mean we don't love you. We just don't like you. It's, uh, I mean, we got a lot of crazy last names, us men and I take. Crazy last names. Clausen's not bad, but you know, there's some Weens, Weeb, Friesen out there. Just strange. Y y thumbs up, is that what? You're, You're a brawn. <laughs> 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 Hope we got that on film. Uh... Now, crazy people, too. I had a cousin of mine went up to the, the Arctic Circle in the, in, the, in the dead of winter, the Arctic Circle, to be, to be a missionary. You know, my, my crazy cousin John, uh, John Friesen. So, way up there, just... He took over from my, my other cousin, my cousin Henry, uh, Henry Froze, so he, he came home. Uh, actually, he pronounces it phrase, but that's because he uh, uh, froze part of his tongue off. Uh, and Henry Froze, and Henry Froze. Yeah, okay, Henry. He used to eat that liquid soap from the soap dispenser. The little, uh, Amway was his favorite, eh? He just like, oh, Amway, uh, he just ate it. Weird, weird kid, nice enough, though. You know, he ne never cursed, but still. <laughs> weird. Yeah, just pass it along to your buddies, uh, if you don't get it. Pass it along. Uh, what do you think the biggest problem that us Mennonites have, though, folks? What do you, you non-Mennonites figure? The biggest problem that, us, that we have. I'll tell you what I think it is. You guys, you guys tell me if you think I'm right or not. The, the, the problem that us Mennonites have is that, well, we're marrying our cousins, eh? I'm pretty sure uh, that's thin bloodline, folks. That's, now you're insulted. <laughs> I insulted a brawn. I'm in trouble. No, it's just kind of cool. My, my grandpa showed me this, this family tree, and it, uh, it traced it's from my father all the way back to the, the 1600s of my Dutch ancestors. You know, the, the 1600s of my, my Dutch ancestors. You know, this, this, this family tree was one line, actually. <laughs> no branches, just a... Uh, Dutch elm disease, I guess. You know, I, I know. You still insulted? Or, uh, It'll be just like my folks watching the show then. <laughs> oh no, I always have fun though. Family reunions, uh, oh man, there's always so much food. Eh? That's my favorite part of going to those, those family reunions. There's tons of food. Went to one of my, uh, my dad's side of the family last summer. Uh, big barbecue, you know, we just we ate, had a great time, great time. Went to one of my, uh, my mom's side of the family, uh, actually last week, it was kind of an early Christmas gathering slash family reunion. And, and again, great time, lots of food. But uh, while, while I was there, I got, to, I got to thinking about the both of them, you know, and I, and I realized something, you know, I, I realized that I saw the exact same people at both of them, you know, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Leroy's my cousin Leroy too? What in the world? I, the only different person between the two was Santa, you know, and I think, <laughs> that 
Atlas uh, Hutterite that we hired. So I don't think that's... <laughs> that's right. Actually, I got, a, <laughs> I got an uncle, and he grew a beard exactly. He looks just like a Hutterite, and he's a Mennonite. So I guess it's nothing that I need to tell anybody. Uh, <laughs> Ugh. I'm not saying I'm exempt from any of this, Miss Braun. I'm not, uh, no, I'm a direct result of the whole bad process there, the thin bloodline. I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure hands aren't supposed to be this big. I guess that's, uh, <laughs> you see a wave of laughter as I go by, yeah. Well, now you're laughing at me, thanks. I, uh, my hand, I can't even wave to be able to hit myself half the time. You know? like, hey, buddy. You got hands this big, folks, you don't need arms. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I used to, be a, used to be a roofer, you know? But I'd be like, hey, Leland, you, you, you want to give me a handful of nails? <laughs> I, uh, I don't think you want a handful. I, uh, I can't even lift a handful. To be honest with you, it's too heavy. I can't, can't lift a handful of anything, to be honest with you. I'm a big football fan, but I'm from Saskatchewan, so I'm a rider fan. Hope you don't... Oh, <laughs> thanks. I don't play for him, man. I just... Uh, I should, I guess, eh? But I was at the last rider home game, cheering away like everybody else there, you know? Ended up blocking a punt. Good! <laughs> afraid one day I'm gonna end up poking a hole in the Goodyear blimp or something, eh? <laughs> We're number one! <laughs> <laughs> you guys need a hand? You, uh, okay. <coughs> Even did sign language for the deaf. Used to, used to do the hand signs for the deaf there until they, uh, until they made me stop. I guess I'm scaring the deaf people or something. I don't know. It's not, it's not, it's too loud, it's too loud. <laughs> so bad if my head wasn't so small in proportion. I think that's... No, is, is that bad? Is that... I think that's... Okay, okay, you don't have to laugh that loud. Uh, it's, uh, it's a point of enjoying yourself, and then there's a point where you're just hurting my feelings, actually. Actually, that's why I wear baggy clothes all the time, you know? I wear baggy clothes, keep my hands in my pocket, try to make my head look bigger. in my pocket, I pull up my socks. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> big, uh, big no-no with the, the Mennonites? What's a big no-no? Still to this day. Yeah. Yes, dancing. <laughs> Woo! She got, she got, she's up on her chair. Woo! I don't know the whole dancing thing. Because of that, you know, my my uh, my grandparents, the men and my brethren, real real old fashioned, and uh, you know, wasn't allowed to dance, allowed to to go to dances. You know, most kids my age were, you know, hanging out with their buddies. You know, the bad kids my age were hanging out with their. This is like grade five or something like that. You know, hiding from their folks, so they'd go smoke or something. You know, I was hanging out with my men and my buddies. We were, we were hiding from my folks so we could dance. You know, I'd be like, okay, the coast is clear. <laughs> Your turn, Cousin Jacob. <laughs> Go, Jacob. Cousin Jacob. Cousin Jacob. Because you know the run. I'm not going anywhere. The dance is taking control. <laughs> I think we're taking this whole dancing thing too far, though. You know, the... The, the home church I grew up in, the, the men sat on one side of church and, and the women had to sit on the other side. You know, they weren't allowed to sit together. Well, my, my grandparents' church, actually. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, but don't you think that's taken a little too far? This, this is church, folks, you know? What's gonna happen in church? Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, 
cycle to break the chain, you know, wasn't going to marry another Mennonite. You know, the entire community was kind of upset with me, you know, especially my, especially my immediate, well, <laughs> they're all pretty much my media family, I guess. But, uh, I was getting lectures, though, you know, my, my dad, well, again, dad, uncle, you know, same thing, but, uh, <laughs> he's just giving it to me, you know, what's wrong with you, huh? You don't like any of your cousins, huh? <laughs> it's not that, uncle, dad, okay? Uh, <laughs> It's a preference thing, and, and I don't prefer <coughs> bearded women. That's, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, they're only jokes. I'm gonna get beat up tonight, beat up tonight. Oh, you guys, now I know, I, I know Winnipeg, big, big Mennonite, uh, big Mennonite country down here. So you guys probably have heard of the, uh, the Mennonite circus that they put on every year? You heard of that? A little touring, and you, and real small, you know, all the performers, all the organizers are Mennonites. It's, it's a great, you know, small family thing. My, my family used to go to it every year. My, my favorite part about it was the, uh, the side show, you know, the, the freak show, you know, the non-bearded lady, Ooh. I have to keep pushing it, I have to. I actually had a lady come up to me after a show and she didn't believe I was, I was actually a Mennonite. She didn't think it was true and uh, she was questioning me on it. Is your last name really Clawson? Are you really a Mennonite? And I was like, no, I gave myself a Mennonite name for showbiz, ma'am, huh? Mennonite showbiz? <laughs> <laughs> My real name, Johnny Hilarious, just wasn't working out. <laughs> oh, brother. Had a, I'll do one more story, then I'll leave us, us alone. Is that okay? I had a Mennonite cousin of mine who, who was blind once. Actually, he still is. Uh, <laughs> anyways, what he did was he trained this, uh, this old Holstein on the farm there to be like a, for lack of a better word, a, a seeing eye cow. You know, because he had a... <laughs> well, a big cow kind of took him around the... Uh, you're joking! Yeah, welcome to comedy, man. Uh, <laughs> this isn't the truth and reality show up here. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, he had this cow, this seeing eye cow kind of took him around the yard. It worked better when he had before that. Before that, he had a, a seeing eye chicken. And, you know, it, you can imagine it, it didn't work out so well. It was actually working pretty good until, you know, one day the chicken lost his head and started running all the yard. <laughs> <laughs> like a chicken with his head cut off, eh? They lost his head. Now, now, I grew up on kind of a small, uh, we moved out to near Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, and uh, went to a really small school. Anybody uh, have a graduating class that was, uh, say, smaller than, than 13 at a school they went to? Anyone taught that? What, what, what do you got? Homeschool. Wow. Okay. That was the punchline to my joke. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> funny though. Uh, no, I, I had 13, we had a big high school I went to, but a small, like junior high, so we had a little junior high grad. We had 13, eh? And uh, that's okay, 13's not a bad number, but it was 10 guys and three girls, you know? So you had to be really quick to get a prom date, otherwise you were... <laughs> and I remember I, I snuck off to a dance one time, and the, the dance was just as bad, you know, you get there, and it's like, okay, is Pam, Pam, oh, Pam's dancing with Sheldon. All right, Gail, where's, oh, okay, you're, okay, Where, where's Bonnie? Oh, Bonnie's in the can. Tim, you wanna dance? Oh, you wanna for a slow one. All right. Dancing is evil. Uh, it's really, really 
disappointed though today, folks. I was really disappointed because I went to uh, went to Staples, and they're all out of them. Is that? Uh... <laughs> they wouldn't, uh, wouldn't even let me into Winners. I don't. Uh... <laughs> Some adolescent geek at the window. Loser! <laughs> you ever had a job that just uh, just sucks the life out of you? Just drains you of everything you've had? You, did you? Yeah, I used to have a job like like that. I used to used to be a blood donor. And, uh, <laughs> don't recommend it. You know you're at, a, you're at a bad job, folks. When when you're sitting at home, this is how you know you're at a bad job. You're sitting at home taking a sick day. You know. Completely legitimate sick day. You're, you're throwing up in the toilet there, but at the same time, you're still thinking, boy, I'm glad I'm not at work. <laughs> Hope I feel this sick tomorrow. job like that, folks. I used to, oh, do me a favor, okay, do me a favor. I, I used to be a courier, okay? And the next time a courier comes to your door with a box or a package there, please don't say to him, hey, what is it? Because we don't know, you know? It's not from us, we're just carrying it, you know? We, we just don't have time to open them all. I guess that's, I mean, what's the difference, folks? It's broken, you know? Crazy. I think that's how I lost that job, actually. <laughs> Saying those things. But uh, no, I left. <laughs> you're taking too way. You're taking all this way too seriously, now. <laughs> oh, you lost your job, huh? You need. <laughs> what will you ever do? You got no other talents. <laughs> Uh, you ever had a job, you, you, know, you know the kind of job I'm talking about, you, you, you start the job, you're the new guy, and there's always the really experienced guy, and he's been there a long time, but he's just this grumpy old guy or, or lady that, uh, that really loves to make the new guy feel stupid, you know? You know the kind of job I'm talking about? I remember I started a job like that once, and there was a guy just like that, and I said something like, boy, it sure is busy today, and this guy, he just jumped all over me, eh? he was like, busy? This is nothing! Just seen it here last year. You know, he just kind of my face about it, and I was like, whatever, you know? But a, about a week after they hired me, they hired this other new guy, you know? So I was no longer the rookie this, this other kid was. So I thought, ah, I wonder what it's like to be on the other side of the coin, you know? Maybe I'll, I'll razz this kid a bit. And one day he was like, well, it sure is cold today. Cold? This is nothing. You should have seen it yesterday. It was, uh... <laughs> But I love doing comedy. I, I love doing it. It's a fun, fun, fun job. It's, because uh, you, especially nights like this when you guys are a good crowd, it's a lot of fun. You know, the only thing I don't like about comedy is you're, you're always on the road. You know, you're, you're always away. And, that, and that's tough. Like I said, I'm, I'm married. And uh, I remember when I first started doing comedy, my wife and I had been married for, I was about two years at the time. And, and I was away for uh, two months straight without seeing the wife, eh? Two months long. <laughs> 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 Too long. That's sign language, actually. I, yeah, I used to do, that's sign language for too long. <laughs> okay, it's not. Uh, no, I, I, I remember, I finally got home, you know, good old, good old Johnson Avenue where we lived there, two months without seeing her, you know, and she met me at the door, you know, and we, we a big long embrace that lasted four hours and went outside, I started playing catch with my son, you know, and, and, and at that time, it, it really got me thinking, you know? Um, okay, I don't have a son. Uh, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Two months is a long time. Things change, people move, you don't... Wrong house, wrong lady, okay? I, uh, I remember we started, uh, wife and I started thinking about having kids, you know, we started uh, thinking, the big picture we had in our mind, well, picture this, it's a, it's a Saturday night, you know, you, you got some company coming over, you're, you're socializing, doing whatever, just, just having a great time, you know, you had some people, some company over, you know. your son's in the tub getting a Saturday night bath, you know, his, his mom's in there drying him off, and he sneaks away from her, and he starts running around the whole house naked, you know, the tiny little kids, they just love being naked and free and running and, and screaming and just having a great time, you know, I, I just, I just think that'd be great, you know, it's a, Mainly because I wouldn't be the only one doing it then. But, uh... <laughs> Come on, son, let's go to the neighbor's house. <laughs> well, that's cold, huh? <laughs> oh, boy. 
I remember when I, uh, when my wife was pregnant, real, uh, real emotional time, and I, I know that I, I know, I'm not trying to knock any of the, <laughs> I know, I've been there. Uh, well, I haven't been there. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble already. I, uh, there's no way out of it. But uh, she's real emotional, and, and the man's job, you know, when she's going through the, the troubling times, you gotta say the right things, you gotta, you gotta soothe the, the, the hurt, you know? And uh, <laughs> it was really bad at that. Uh, I remember this one time she was just bawling away, you know? She was like, oh, look at me, I'm fat now. What do you mean now? What do you, uh, all right, okay, all right, yeah, okay. No, no, yes, 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 I agree, you're fat. No, 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 no. What a minute, it's all in your head. You're fat head, is that? Give me the lemon for the couch now, please. She's, it's kind of neat though, when a, when a woman's pregnant, not only does she have the, the big old belly sticking out there, but uh, to make room for the womb, it kind of shifts the, the, uh, the organs around on the inside, kind of shifts, shifts the innards around a little bit, kind of moves things around. Weirdest thing, I'm, gi I'm giving her a back rub, you know, they get the lower back pain, giving her a full back massage, you know, and in the middle of it, all of a sudden, <laughs> she wet herself, eh? And she's like, well, you're pushing on my bladder! <laughs> on your shoulder? Come on! Uh, Just the rest of the week, I was falling around, tapping her on the shoulder. Hey, honey, hey, go oh, look at her. <laughs> it's a gusher, huh? I'll clean it up, baby, hang on. <laughs> she, uh, she started blaming everything on the child within her, too, you know? I remember she was about uh, about eight months pregnant, so she was way out there. You know, we were sitting on the couch watching a little TV, just just enjoying ourselves. You know, having a nice calm before the storm kind of thing. And uh, in the middle of it, all of a sudden, <laughs> oh, baby's kicking! Is it kicking? Baby. <laughs> yeah, and farm too, apparently. Huh? <laughs> Unless that actually was the baby kicking, you know? <laughs> Some kind of weird flatulence disorder or something? <laughs> Imagine that poor kid walking to school later on in life and be like... <laughs> <laughs> well, the kids would be teasing him. Party pants, party pants! Shut up, I said, leave me alone! <laughs> Like sneaking after curfew as a high school kid, eh? Be like, <laughs> so, uh, so here's a bit of advice for you. Uh, <laughs> like you want to hear advice from me. Uh, yeah, you get the ultrasound to make sure the baby's okay. That's a, that's a great idea, but uh, don't do what my wife did. She took the, uh, the ultrasound picture there and she, she kept it in her wallet, you know, and she was taking it out and showing everybody, here's our baby. Because you can't tell what it is, you know. Unless you're a doctor, you have, you have no idea what you're looking at there. It's, it's gross, really. It's creepy. And, and looking back now, you know, we, we probably shouldn't have made Christmas cards of them either. You know, now that... Uh, oh, Merry Christmas from the Glossons! So I went to deli deliver the baby. We're all set to go there, you know. Uh, I've been to prenatal classes, so I thought I could, you know, handle just about anything, and uh, I was all ready to go. My wife was up on the delivery table there. She had the, uh, the uh, hospital gown. What's a hospital gown called? It's got a special name. Right. Uh, it has a special name. What is that? Hospital clothing? Was it? Yeah. A sheet? <laughs> That's like the 1800s. Well, let's get her a sheet or something. <laughs> sheet. I keep wanting to say kilt for some reason. I have no idea. It's like we went to the old Scottish hospital or something, eh? The name was give a great big show for Dr. McGregor. Look at the sleeves of his head! Look at those hands! Quit not to slap him if he slaps a soul!
So I'm all set to go, all ready to go. And uh, like I said, she's all there, ready to go. And I was like, okay, honey, is there anything I can get for you? You're okay? Okay, hang on a second here now. Now, now what are these? Stirrups. Oh. <laughs> Stirrups. Well, she gotta give birth, she's gotta ride a mechanical bull, you know? <laughs> And that's when the narcolepsy started. So. Um, kind of creepy though. When, when she, so she's given birth, and, and when the head came out, the doctor went and grabbed the suction thing. And they didn't say anything about this in prenatal. It, it looks, it, honestly, it looked like a, little, uh, like a little plunger head with a hole and a vacuum tube attached. This is what it was, and it actually connected to this machine, and it gives you leverage, eh? Leverage, it's a baby, it's not a calf, you know what I mean? <laughs> And the doctor was just, oh, we got leverage now. He's just briefing on it. Here we go. I didn't think it was a doctor. You know, probably like the maintenance guy or something. You know? <laughs> what you guys need on there is a shop app. That's what you. <laughs> oh, bags full again. Oochie goochie. He does have big hands. Look at him. So as a result of this thing, my boy was born with this huge knob on his head, eh? It actually, it, it sucked it up and then it swole up there. For like two weeks he had this big bun, it was gross looking and creepy. It took the attention away from his hands, but still. <laughs> looked a lot like the, actually looked a lot like the ultrasound picture, so. But uh, we took him, uh, they went to Hamlet to me for the first time. You know, he'd been in the womb for a long time, so his skin was a little dry. So, so what they do is they, they cover him in Vaseline, you know? So the first time I got to hold him, he was shining. Oh, look at this shine. <laughs> hey, I fixed his head. Hey. <laughs> so we took him home from the hospital, because uh, you know, they don't let you leave him there. Uh, <laughs> that I know now. I might have slipped the nurse a fisky or something. Uh, I'm just kidding. Everybody's like, oh, he hates his son. No, I love him. He's crazy, though. He's crazy. He's, he's crazy. He really is. He, uh, well, we first had him there. Uh, I wonder where he gets it from, eh? Uh, first had him home there. I was a uh, big thing. Everybody wants to, you know, a uh, big thing for me, I was always trying to get him to laugh. You know, you get a new baby, you always want him laughing and giggling and whatever. And you get company coming over, everybody wants to see the new baby, you know. And, uh, but this is what would happen. The company would say the same thing to me. I'd get him laughing. Oh, look at this, I got him laughing. Every single one of them said the same thing. Oh, that's just gas. It's just gas. It's a natural reaction to gas, you know. It's a, it's a big old grin. So, you know? Next year's Christmas party, if there's a foul odor before supper, just look around, there'll be somebody at the table. <laughs> I'm having a great time. <laughs> Excuse me for a moment. <laughs> oh, good old poopy farty, eh? Uh, <laughs> maybe not. Oh boy, though, I tell you, he's, uh, he's, he's three and a half now, and uh, he was, when he was two, like, you know, they say the terrible twos, it is pre it's pretty terrible, but uh, when he turned three, he just all of a sudden became, like, rebellious, like, not just, not just crazy kid, but just, like, rebellious, he would totally, you know what I mean, like, as soon as he turned three years old, and you know what I think it is, and you guys are probably thinking the exact same thing, he got into the drugs, huh? <laughs> he, uh, got a hold of some smack. Changed overnight. <laughs> Crazy kid. We got another one on the way now. So that's gonna be a... Uh... Hey, thanks. Uh... <laughs> no, no, that's okay. I'm not looking for it. But uh, my son's name is, is Cooper. He's, uh, oh, he's three and a half, Cooper. And uh, the next boy, he's gonna be a boy. We found out the ultrasound. Uh, it's a uh, little CCM. And, uh, uh, no. <laughs> Well, actually, we're gonna let my son name him. Uh, we're gonna let Cooper name him. But I, you know, <laughs> looking back now, that wouldn't have been a good idea because uh, he would have been called Little Bear, <laughs> which is my son's favorite cartoon show, and it would have been spelled A O P because that's the only letters my son knows. <laughs> Imagine that in school. Is uh, is Owl here? A O P? Uh, Little Bear, right here. That's, uh, <laughs> my brother named me. This pregnancy, man, way, way different, this pregnancy. Uh, 
Because my wife's got this incredible sense of smell. Just like, like she can smell anything, you know? The other day she was like, I smell burnt toast. Honey, the toaster wasn't broke for like two weeks. What are you talking about? Not in our house. And, uh, and I didn't hear it when, when, when she was pregnant with Cooper. I never heard the hiccups. But with, with this one, there's hiccups all the time. You, you can actually feel the hiccups, eh? It, it, weirdest thing, you know? In the middle of the night, she's got hiccups, you know? And, and I'm trying to help, you know? Like, ah! And I'm trying to get her to... <laughs> oh, did I wake you, honey? Sorry. <laughs> Baby had hiccups, eh? I was just trying to... <laughs> My wife also says that I, uh, that I have road rage. Anyone else have the road rage? No? None of you? She says, now if I have road rage, then my wife's got what I call road nag, I would say. Because just right when you get in the car, beep, 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 you know? She don't stop. Slow down, yield sign, speed up, does it? You know? I'm happy to begin with, but about two blocks in, I'm just gripping that wheel, eh? Just like, oh. <laughs> get out of the way! <laughs> Gotta drop off the wife! <laughs> This is a true story. This is an honest to goodness true story. We're driving along this, this bridge in, in, in Saskatoon, and we, uh, middle of winter, we hit this sheet of black ice. We're spinning around out of control on the ice. Like, we can go off the bridge into the river and die. But we're still in motion. We don't even know what's going to happen yet. And she's giving me the gears about it. I couldn't believe it. She's like, I told you to slow down. What are you trying to do? Get me killed? Not initially, but I'm starting to work up to it. think that she was thinking, hey, if we die here, he's not going to know how upset I am about his driving. <laughs> if he would have died too, she would be riding me all eternity. She would be, thought this was called heaven. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> but I, I, I love her very much. She, uh, she always, uh, you know, she... <laughs> She gets upset. She's like, well, what are, you know, what are people going to think about me? And I'm like, well, honey, you know, they know you married me. And chances are they don't think much anyways. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but no, they're jokes. You guys know they're jokes. And, and she, she knows too, so she's okay with it. Met her, met her in my college days. When I was in college, I used, uh, used, to, used to fast and, and pray quite a bit. And, uh, well, I wasn't really fasting. I just didn't have any food, I guess. <laughs> But I, I prayed, I prayed a lot. Uh, mainly for food, because I was really hungry. But it's still, it's still well time spent. I remember reading the story, uh, you know, Solomon, hey, eh? wisest man ever, hey? Eh? King, when he became king, uh, you know, they, they, they go through the ceremony and he asked for wisdom instead of asking for riches and power like everybody else. And, uh, and God was so impressed with that. Not only did he give him the wisdom, but he gave him, you know, all the riches and power and everything, you know. And I was, I was like, ooh, you know, I read that story about 10 years ago and I was like, yeah, yeah. You know, reread it, I guess, because I'm almost 30. Uh, <laughs> but I started, I started praying from that day on. You know, I want to I, I pray for wisdom. God's impressed with the way, you know, so I prayed and prayed for wisdom, you know, and. And, uh, you know, it's been, been 10 years, every day, I, I've been praying for it, and, uh, hey, I guess the answer's no. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I thought I'd end on some impressions, though. Can I do some impressions for you folks? Yeah. Wow, what a thunderous applause that I got. <laughs> Shows they're supposed to build, eh? But it's not working for me. All right, this is a... Uh, actually, do I look like Bob Saget before I go on? You think I look like Bob Saget? Yeah. Uh, thanks. The biggest geek on television. Thanks. <laughs> actually, my, everybody's been telling me that lately. Eh? Even, even my daughter said that the other day, you know? And I was like, I do not, DJ. <laughs> go play with your Uncle Jesse or something, all right? Yes. <laughs> No, I don't have a daughter. It's a joke, eh? <laughs> this is a mind... Okay, I better have a sip of water. This is my impression of uh, Stevie Wonder singing a hymn, okay? Stevie Wonder singing a hymn. 
Amazing is how sweet the sound And then same a branch like me I once was lost but now am found I was blind God. <laughs> Can't see, eh? He's blind. So he got to that point. He's upset. Okay, so quick impression for you, folks. This is my impression of a uh, of a skydiver whose chute won't open. Okay, skydiver, chute won't open. Well, thanks for the thunderous applause. It makes the pain that much better. I don't normally do impressions in my act, because eh? you, you do an impression to somebody, it's like you're putting them up on a pedestal. You know, you, you're, you're putting them in a higher place than you. It's almost, it's almost like hero worship, you know? And I, and I think that's wrong. In fact, I think people that do impressions are losers. Losers. <laughs> Jim Carrey. Hey, it was Jim. She's looking at me. I didn't even sound like Preston Manning. I don't know. Stop looking. All right, folks, I'll leave you with this. I, uh, I'm a big James Bond fan. I love the James Bond movies. And uh, one of my favorite things about these movies is that. Uh, that theme music they have, eh? Like, not, not just the theme music, but the, the accompaniment that goes along. Every time he walks into a room, you know, he's got the coolest music playing. Just makes me, he's cool to begin with, but it just makes him even cooler, you know? Like the, like the old, uh, the old Sean Connery days, he come walking into the casino or something. The name's Bond. James Bond. <laughs> you know, it was cool, it was hip, it made him cool. Huh? I got thinking, yeah. I got thinking the other day, that's what I need, you know? You know, theme music, maybe, maybe hire a little band to kind of follow me around or something, but then I got thinking, like, okay, you know, what, what would my theme music be? Yeah? My name's Clausen. Leland Clausen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, you guys have been a great crowd. Merry Christmas to you.